Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we have the comparison of two heavyweights. We have Sofi on one corner and we have Wellfront on the other. Which of these organizations is for you? Which one fits your specific needs? Because of the high APY nowadays or right now, a high yield savings account, in my personal opinion, is almost like a short term investment that can give you a return of four and a half. 5%. I've seen some banks out there offering up to 5.5%, which is absolutely outrageous. If you compare it to other bank accounts from brick and mortar stores like Bank of America or Chase or Wells Fargo. So definitely high yield savings accounts, in my personal opinion, are the way to go if you are looking for a safe place to keep your cash while you figure things out in life. Also, if you're looking for inflation protection, if you're looking to build your emergency fund security, you save it for a purchase, maybe for a house. As you can see here in the picture, what you can see there is my gold house. That's what I'm working towards. I want it just a little small, but I definitely want a big backyard. I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments what you are looking for in a house of your goal house. Not your dream house, but your goal house. So with that being said, I am someone that has been going over high yield savings accounts here on the channel. And with my engineering background, I developed a certain set of requirements or let's call them targets that can help us select and filter the best high yield savings accounts. We're talking about a competitive APY. I don't want any zero monthly fees or minimum deposit. I want easy access to my money. I want withdrawal limits, no more than six or more, no less than six, excuse me. I want a good interface. I want a good website. I also want human customer service. I don't want hidden requirements. And also I'm looking for that branding for the warm and fuzzy feeling of confidence, trust, comfort, and familiarity. These are my personal requirements. And if you feel comfortable with these, go ahead and steal it, screenshot it, share it with a friend, share this video with someone that you think it's going to find useful. With that being said, let's talk about the best feature comparison between social finance and Wellfront. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. So as of February, we have an APY of 4.6% for SoFi. We also have a 5.0% for Wellfront. In addition to that, these two organizations do offer signing bonuses. In the case of SoFi, you have a signing bonus of up to $325 right now as of February 2024. If you have a direct deposit between $1,000 and $5,000, you get a $50 bonus. If you have a direct deposit higher than $5,000, SoFi does grant you up to $325 bonus for opening an account with them. Now, in the case of Wealthfront, Wealthfront takes a different approach. Wealthfront gives you a 0.5% increase in your interest rate for the three months if you sign up with them and you use an affiliated link. Currently, I don't have an affiliate link, but you can find it on Reddit. I'm working on that, so bear with me here while I work on that myself. You have to do a little bit of math here, whether you take the $325 upfront and cash incentives, or you take the 0.5% increase in your interest if you have more than $50,000, $70,000, $100,000 to deposit in a high yield savings account, then that 0.5% difference, it's going to make all of the difference, right? Because then at that point, you're talking about Wellfront reaching an APY of 5.5%, and that just blows so far out of the water. And if you're only looking for interest and to maximize your savings, then pretty much that's the end of the video for you. But there are other things to consider, a little bit you know. For example, hey, FDIC insurance. These two organizations offer, offer FDIC insurance on steroids. And we're talking about SoFi offering up to $2 million in FDIC insurance and Wellfront offering up to $8 million. Now the philosophy or strategy both of these organizations use is the same. They act as a hub and when they take your money, if they take your $2 million or $8 million, they distribute that money into all of these other banks that are also FDIC insured. So they're able to act as a hub and they're able to offer you a much higher FDIC insurance than what most other banks out there would offer. Now, when it comes to minimum deposit, minimum deposit in the case of Wealthfront and when it comes to, in the case of SoFi, they both have a zero minimum deposit requirement as well as maintenance fees, zero there. Now, I must say here that in order to get that APY with SoFi, 
you do have to have a direct deposit in which case that direct deposit however much it happens to be it can be 100 200 300 dollars then technically speaking then that becomes your minimum deposit with sofi now when it comes to customer service both of these organizations do offer human customer service there is a number that you can call with sofi what i've noticed and this is just based on my research i did notice that there's a number that you can call right away now with wealthfront if you go to the wealthfront website they tell you that if you want to call a human and talk to somebody, if you want to have a telephone, telephone, then you have to sign in with an account. You have to have an account with Wellfront. So the way I see this is, I mean, it makes sense, right? You want to have your customer service for the clients, for the people that are calling regarding questions they have regarding their account. So I see no flaw there. Just it is what it is. They're just being more selective with the type of communication services and customer service that they offer to their customers. As we'll see here, as we go through the video, Wellfront gives me the vibe of a more automated service. They're very investment focused and we're gonna uncover these layers as we go into the video. Now, let's go over more features. Let's go over access. When it comes to SoFi and Wellfront, both of these organizations do offer online regular standard access to your account if you have a checking account with any of these organizations which they do offer as part of the services then you do have atm access through a checking account to your how you savings account when it comes to making deposits they both of these organizations offer very similar features with bank transfers direct deposits mobile deposits when it comes to transfer to external banks however there is a slight difference here now in the case of sofi they take two three business days up to three business days in my book, based on what I've seen, it's very, very standard. There's nothing wrong with that. If a bank is taking four days, five days, seven days, there's a little bell that starts kind of like making me question whether or not I would want to use that organization specifically. When it comes to wealth fund, they take between one to three business days. So it just depends on what you need. If you are someone that is going to be needing your money right away, maybe a better way would be to open a checking account and then just transfer from your savings to so your check-in and then you can go to an ATM and access your money that way if you have to have it right away. Now, when it comes to branding, branding, in my opinion, it helps you build a relationship unconsciously, unbeknownst to you, to a certain organization. Now, when it comes to SoFi, I bet you didn't know, but SoFi stands for social finance. It was established in 2011 by a couple of business students out of Stanford. While Wealthfront was established in 2008, mainly for investing, it, had, it uses a lot of artificial intelligence features. A lot of companies out there, in order to describe Wealthfront, they use RoboAdvisor because they have automated services to help people make investments for their own lives. So it just depends on what you're looking for and which of these brands speaks to you the most. I'm sure that you're going to relate to one of these organizations best. Now, when it comes to withdrawal limits per month, currently these two organizations offer no limit on the withdrawals per month. And this is very special because there are some organizations out there that give you a limit of up to six withdrawals per month. If you guys haven't heard this, up to April 2020, banks were federally limited to give their clients six withdrawals per month. However, because of the pandemic and everything that happened, then the Fed said, okay, we're going to stop this regulation. And now it's up to banks to decide how often they allow their customers to withdraw money from their savings accounts. Now, when it comes to client reviews, NerdWallet gives both of these organizations a 5.0. Now, one of the things that I love saying here when I talk about these banks and giving insights is it's good to go into these reviews and read one by one what are people usually saying, what are the things that are truly a concern for you? Some people may be complaining about something completely different and it may not be related to what you're looking for. In that case, is it really a problem? So I suggest that you go dig a little deeper into these reviews and make a decision on which is for you. Now, when it comes to the head-to-head -head and comparing the best features of these two, SoFi does have a high APY of 4.6%. And on the other hand, high, Wellfront has a higher one of 5.0. If you have an affiliate link, you can take that up to 5.5, so Wellfront would win there. However, SoFi does offer a high cash bonus of up to $325. Wellfront offers you an APY 
of 0.5% additional to what they're currently offering. So just depending on how much money you have, then that may be a little higher than the $325. Also, both of these organizations offer no minimum deposit, no monthly fees. Now, Wellfront does offer a $8 million FDIC insurance. I can't even say that out loud. That's so much money, man. That's such a high FDIC insurance. <laughs> And also you have FDIC insurance from SoFi at $2 million. Now, the way I see this, SoFi, it's more geared towards having good tools for checking and savings, while Wealthfund is a little bit more investing heavy focus. At least that's the reputation and the vibe that I personally get. And lastly, both of these organizations also have good customer reviews. So which one would I choose? Based on the way I see these two organizations, if I'm looking for a basic checking and savings, if I'm looking for a cash signing bonus of up to $325, if technically speaking, I don't have any investment needs yet, it doesn't mean that SoFi doesn't offer these features. They do, but it's the reputation that I personally get that they're more, more geared towards checking, savings, helping you save money, maybe getting a few loans here and there if you're into that, then I will go with SoFi. However, if I'm looking for the highest interest rate, if I'm looking for a higher FDIC insurance, if I wanted more options or tools on investing and my personality is more tech heavy, a more modern, visionary, futuristic, Wellfront just gives me that vibe. And I would choose Wellfront if I were looking for those things. So of course, at the end of the day, it all depends on what you are looking for, what you are the most familiar with, and which of these organizations speak to you the most? Which one meets your needs? If you are interested in opening an account with any of these organizations, check the links in the description. And if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think, what other questions you have, and I'll be happy to answer them.